Now, moving on. A marriage boom leads to a baby boom. Yeah, we talked about this before. I don't know if you see this. Check out my water bottle. Boom. That's my name on it. Pretty important. You know, you get that when you're such a good U.S. history teacher. So, during the Depression, and not shockingly, marriage rates and birth rates had dropped. Well, you can't afford to have kids, right? You can't afford to get married because you can't feed the other person. You know, you're struggling enough as it is. Why bring someone else into that life of yours? So, people just stayed single, and people just worked on their own and took care of themselves. Now, in 1946, there were almost 2.3 million marriages, an increase of 600,000. What do you think the big reason for that is? Hmm? Anybody? Anybody? No? No? Obviously, it's post-World War II. These guys go off and fight. They almost die, and they come back home. They're like, hey, I'm I'm ready to get married because look at the experience I just had. And so we see this astronomical boom. Well, at the same time, after they get married, they're probably going to have kids. Or, mm, I got pregnant. Now I have to get married because I got back from the war. So both of them lead to this increase in, in marriage rates and in birth rates. The average age of marriage in the 1950s was 20 for women and 22 for men. Now, you're starting to see it increase a little bit than it was previous. You know, it used to be a little bit less in age. You know, you'd see 18, 19, things like that. What do you think it is? Well, what do people have to do now? A lot of people are going to school, especially men. So think about 22. It's after they graduate. Or if they got into the military at 18, it's four years after their commitment and service. And women, on the same hand, are saying, hey, I want to get my high school education. I want to go get my associate's degree. I want to start a life. I want to start a business. Now, if you look at numbers today, these are obviously a lot lower age ranges than what we see today. You know, people are getting older. They're putting work first before they get married, which is fine. You can do that. But back then, people are like, you know, I need to start a family. I need to get going. And it's because that's what they had seen their parents do. You know, their parents had got married at 18 at 19 years old. So they didn't want to wait too long because then they weren't sure whether that, you know, it was acceptable or not. When they got married, they started families right away. There was no waiting. There was no like, hey, get married. Let's enjoy two, three, four, five years together. Let's focus on us. Let's take trips. Let's do this. Let's do that. It's like, hey, let's get married. Let's have kids, which some people do now, um, but you don't see it as much today. Um, and there's some things for that. People obviously need to financially get themselves in the right situation before they start a family. And life expectancy is so much longer today that people wait because they're gonna, still going to have a lot of time with their kids. Um, the baby boom, all right? The boomers, if you will, okay? Um, a baby boom is a large increase in the number of babies born in proportion to the size of the population. Now, you got to think, we just lost a lot of people during World War II. And so we've had this drastic decline in the number of people in the United States. Then we're going to see it shoot back up because people are coming back from the war. They're excited to be back home. They start having kids. They start getting married. So there's a lot of factors that go into this. Um, some of your great-grandparents might be part of that baby boom generation of the 50s. Uh, I know mine were. My, my dad was born in 1955, so he is part of that boom in the 1950s. His parents came home um, from war. They waited. They had children. Um, and so you're going to see that transpire, okay? Now, the next slide kind of shows U.S. birth rates from 1930 to 1970. Um, and you see a major increase. Obviously, it's, it's pretty low, below 20%. Um, and then the major spike there in 1955 before it starts dropping off again in the 1970s. Now, Later, we'll talk why that drop-off is going to occur, why you're not seeing the boom. One is most of the people in the United States by the 1970s are only like 15 years old, right? They were born in like 1955. Um, so they're probably not the time when they're going to have kids because those baby boomers are just teenagers. Also, what are we getting involved in in the late 60s, early 70s? You guessed it, Vietnam, all right? And in the 1970s, we start to go into a little bit of an economic recession. Um, because we're producing so much for the war and there's not a lot of money for consumer goods. So people really start to hold off on having families. It's too much of a burden for them. Now, family rules, all right? Um, we 
have working dads and stay-at-home moms, okay? Now, this is what exemplifies in the 1950s the traditional family. Um, dads who went to work each day and moms who stayed at home. And, and a lot of times this is by choice. Um, the moms wanted to stay at home. You know, they have worked their way through World War II and you know, they see it's a man's role in a patriarchal society that men should be the ones off doing the work while women are at home taking care of the family because they're the nurturers, all right? And so they kind of stepped aside and they said, here you go, here's your jobs, here's your opportunity to provide for the family. And, and women were okay with this. Now, you still see it today. Um, I'm a prime example of this. I go to work every day and my wife stays home. Um, now, that's not a choice. Uh, that's because having three kids, it's really expensive for daycare and stuff. So uh, we actually save more money by my wife not working than working and dropping our kids off somewhere. Um, but you do still see us today. This is still a thing. And it's not that like women didn't want to have jobs or anything like that. It was just the status of American society. It was the men were in control and the men were in charge. All right. Uh, marriage manuals uh, of the day were given out. Like people, you know, are young. They're 20, 22, get married. So they get some guidance. They get these manuals that they sit down and read. Um, you know, whether right before they get married or right after they get married, because it's going to tell you about the ups and downs. You know, life isn't always just roses, all right? Um, and so it's going to help people through those hardships, trying to decrease the number of divorces that we have in the United States. Mothers uh, are to devote themselves full time to raising their children. Um, if not, it could damage a child because. You know, they don't know if, if, if the mom's not around, what's going to happen? Is that child going to have the same upbringing? Is it going to have the same love? Is it going to have the same nurturing? Um, is it going to be an okay and productive member of society? We just don't know. Obviously today, you know, moms stay home with maternity leave for so long, but then have to go back to work. And that's a struggle for a lot of moms to leave their children. But, you know, because of situation, pay or whatever it may be, have to. Now we see these kids are obviously fine. You know, it's not like, Oh, well, the kids that get left, this isn't good. No, everything's fine. And so studies have kind of disproven this as times went on. But in the 1950s, with the lack of education, we don't know what to do. We're just like, okay, well, if this is what society's doing, it's what society's doing, all right? Magazines, movies, and advertisements portrayed the ideal American family. You know, after you watch this video lecture, you can get on YouTube and you can search things like The Andy Griffith Show. Um, leave it to Beaver. You know, all of these traditional families, um, you know, the Brady Bunch, where you have a family that comes together and you have the husband who works, the mother who stays at home, takes care of the children, drops them off, goes to places. And, and that's how society was supposed to look, you know, um, in the Andy Griffith show, Mayberry, and things of that nature. You know, kids are whistling down the street, carrying the fishing pole. And, and that's the 1950s. It was like this great time to be alive and everyone's enjoying it. But the family structure was, here's the mom waiting all day, taking care of the family, making dinner, making sure the house is clean. As soon as the husband comes home, he sits down, he breaks out the newspaper, he starts reading, and she sits there and she serves them. And she wants to make sure the children are quiet when he gets home. Don't bother your dad and things like that because... Society had created this persona of that's what life's like. Now, we all know life's hectic. When we get home, you know, crazy things. My kids, and if they may run down into the video right now, I just had to get them off the trampoline right before this. But they're, they're, they'll go nuts. And it's not like, don't bother dad. It's more like they're jumping all over dad. And, like, sometimes my daughter comes over screaming in my ear. And, and But that's how life is. That's how it probably is in your house, too. It's not like, oh, everyone's sitting down at the same time for dinner. That still happens. But it's not like it was in the 1950s. It was, hey, everyone needs to be home at 6.30. We're having family dinner because people work 9 to 5. And that's it. Kids need to be home. They need to be doing homework. And then they have family dinner. And so we're seeing how the 1950s thought society would be to today, how it's a lot different. Okay? Uh, this led many young women to forego college education. Um, because obviously they want to get married, and they're afraid if they go to college and they wait too long, then people won't want to marry them. You know, they'll be too old for them. Um, and so women would just say, hey, you know what, my education is not important. I'm going to find a husband who is educated, who has a great job, and who can support our family, 
And that's all we really need. And so I really don't need to get my education. Now, obviously, this isn't the trend today. Ladies are going to college. Ladies are getting high education and, and have really important roles in society. And even the stay-at-home moms today are probably college educated because that was their choice. It's not like they're doing it because that's what society is making them do. Moving on. 